For this lesson, I'm going to cover the traceroute command. Traceroute is a command that allows you to see every computer, including routers, between your computer and a host that you choose. Traceroute is used differently depending on your operating system. For example, TraceRT for Windows, Traceroute for Linux. To use Traceroute, you simply type in the name of the computer or IP address of the computer that you want. Traceroute can be used to diagnose routing problems, latency issues, or network bottlenecks. Now then, let's cover how Traceroute works for non-technical and technical. For example, let's say you connect to a website. Let's say howtogeek.com. The traffic has to go through several different places before it reaches the website. That traffic goes through your local router, your internet service provider router, and onto larger networks, and so forth. Traceroute shows us the path the traffic takes to reach the website. It also displays the delay that occurs at each stop. So if you're having issues reaching a website and that website is working properly, it's possible there's a problem somewhere on the path between your computer and the website server. But Traceroute will help you. It'll show you where the problem is. So in more technical terms, Traceroute sends a sequence of packets using ICMP protocol, which is the Internet Control Message Protocol, the same protocol that's used in the ping command. So the first packet has a TTL known as a time to live, which is one. The second packet has a TTL of two and so forth. Each time a packet is passed to a new router, the TTL is decreased by one. When it reaches zero, the packet is discarded and the router returns to an error message. So by sending packets in this manner, Traceroute ensures that each router in the path will discard a packet and send a response back. So to use traceroute in Windows, you simply type trace RT space, and let's use this example, howtogeek.com. Now then, I'm going to show you a demo on how to use traceroute in your Windows operating system. OK, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to use traceroute. So first off, let's go to start. Type in CMD. This will open up your command prompt. Let's make this a little bit bigger. OK, so let's type in trace RT space. And we will use the howtogeek.com website. So now you'll notice that the route will take form as the computer receives responses from the routers along the way. All right, let's take a closer look at the output to try to understand what all this means. So the first line, this first line represents uh, our home router, assuming we're behind a router. Right here, this uh, 10.0.0.1, which it is. The next line represents our ISP, Internet Service Provider. As you can see, Comcast. And further further down each line represents routers that are farther away. So this first column is your hop. The second column is called the RTT1. So RTT1, RTT2, and RTT3. And finally, this is the domain name or IP address. So the hop. So whenever a packet is passed between a router, this is referred to as a hop, such as hop 1, hop 2, hop 3, hop 4. For example, in the output above, we notice right here that it had 15 hops, 15 hops to reach the how to geek server from my location. OK, RTT1. Again, this is the round trip time 
that it takes place for a packet to get to a hop and back to my computer. This is also referred to as latency. And it is the same number you see when you use ping. So traceroute, it sends three packets to each hop. One, two, and three. And displays each time. So this gives you some sort of idea on how consistent or inconsistent the latency is. So if you see a star, but we don't, but if we did see a star, like a star here, a star here, a star here, that would mean that it didn't receive a response and it could indicate that packet was lost. And finally, we have the this column, the domain or IP address. So if available, the domain name would show up. This can often help you in seeing the location of the router. If it isn't available, sometimes you'll see the IP address of the router instead being displayed. Again, you have your hop RTT1, which is your route trip time 1, route trip time 2, route trip time 3. Let's take another look at another site to do some comparison. Again, trace RT space, and we'll do Baidu.com, which is a site in China. So we notice that we used uh, a different region for our other trace route at Baidu.com in China. Notice how the paths differ, but also notice how the first hops are the same as the traffic reaches the ISP, while the later hops are different as the packet goes elsewhere. So here again, first hop 10.0.0.1. Again, 10.0.0.1, same, pretty much the same, same. And then notice where, where it's different. Look at a hop seven. We have California, but in our hop seven, we have Seattle. And notice down here, it totally changes. Notice that the times for the RTT1, RTT2, RTT3 are much are much bigger. This is probably because it's uh, traveling overseas now. Because it's further away, it takes longer for it to come back. So remember, if you're ever having trouble connecting to a website, TraceRock can help you in finding out what the problem is. It'll give you a visualization of the path which the traffic takes between your computer and the web server that you choose. So I hope this demo helped you a little bit in understanding what traceroute is as well as what each of these columns mean. Well, thank you for watching and if you, have want, if you want to learn more about traceroute, I provided information in the description or in the instructor's note. So just take, uh, take a look at that and it should help you. All right, thank you, and have a great day.